Welcome to New York, Dora! Hello, Jess. I'm Dora. So glad to meet you. Hurry up! Let's come inside. Episode 1. Get to know new friends. Hello. My name is Dora. I'm 23 years old. I am a fresh graduate with a major in journalism. I was born and raised in Boston, a very beautiful harbor city. Boston is best known for its famous baked beans, Fenway Park, and the Boston Marathon, and so on. The city is so amazing, and I'm very proud of it. You know what? In my free time, I usually play guitar, learn about film production, and hang out with friends. How about you? What do you often do in your free time? I'm sure you all have very interesting hobbies. Right now, it's still kind of Since I was small, I have always dreamt about being a successful reporter. That's why I decided to move to New York City to pursue that dream. Today is the first day I have been to New York City and met my flatmate, Jess, to start a new life. Stay tuned to see what experiences that I can gain through this journey. What a beautiful day! Hey, Dora! I'm Mike, Jess's boyfriend. She's making dinner for us, so I'm here to pick you up. Yes, I'm Dora. Nice to meet you, Mike. Oh, you seem to have a very heavy suitcase. Let me help you. I do. Most of them are my equipment for reporting, and also my guitar. Just told me that you wanted to become a reporter. Exactly. One of my motivations to move to New York City. The city is just so fabulous. It is. I hope that you like it. Please, follow me this way. Yes, thank you. Your room number is 10A, so it'll take a bit of time with all these belongings. Thank you for helping me. You're welcome. Here we go. Oh, the smell is so good! Jess must be very good at cooking. She really is. Welcome to New York, Dora! Hello, Jess. I'm Dora. So glad to meet you. Hurry up! Let's come inside. Sure, thank you. Finally, we've gotten to meet each other. What are you making, Jess? It smells so good. Oh, I'm making Russian salad, mashed potatoes, and steaks for tonight. Wow, that's so cool, Jess. I'm so clumsy when it comes to cooking. I bet I can learn a lot of things from you. Sure. Don't be a stranger, Dora. Mike and I are your friends now. Yeah, we're very happy to have you here. Jess is dying for a flatmate like you. Aw, thank you two so much. What do you do? You probably won't believe this, but I'm a model with a huge love for food and making food. Wow, how interesting, Jess. You are a model? No wonder why you have a really nice figure. Oh, stop it. I love your hair. You don't know how many times I wanted to curl my hair like yours. Yeah, Jess is always obsessed with curly hair. Even though the last time she had curly hair, things were not so nice. Oh my god, Mike, that was a mistake. How was that, guys? 
Jess overused the curling machine so her hair got burnt. I had to use wigs for almost a year and that's so annoying. It's so terrible, isn't it? How about you, Mike? What is your job? I'm a computer scientist. I work with computers and computational systems. He sounds like such a badass when saying about computer stuff, right? Yeah, computer science is a very competing and rewarding field now. I'm also very curious about how you two met. Fill me in on your story. I met Jess two years ago at a restaurant while she, her family, and friends were celebrating her birthday. The moment I stepped in that Chinese restaurant, I fell head over heels with her right off the bat. Jess was the most beautiful girl in the room that day. Mike, that's sweet. What's your side of the story, Jess? Well, I didn't really have an impression for him at first. But after our first date, I know that Mike is the right one for me. Yeah, I said, Jess, I'm a computer scientist. I know pretty much everything about computers. That's enough for me already. Now I'd love to know more about you. I was feeling like what he said was the sincerest thing I had ever heard in my entire life. We've been together ever since. You are relationship goals. Thank you, Dora. By the way, how is your family in Boston doing? They're doing pretty good. My parents used to work as hospital staff but now they're loyal members of the dancing club. Glad to hear that. We love dancing too, Dora. We can all go dancing when your parents come visiting you here in New York. That's a good idea. My parents are going to love that so much. Dora, I think we should go see your room now. Follow me, girl. Oh, yes, please do. This is your room. This is your closet where you can put your clothes and belongings. We will share the same bathroom. Yes, I see. I'll be outside in case you need anything. Make yourself at home because it's your room and your home now. Thank you so much, Jess. Oh, don't forget that we're having a party to welcome you tonight. <laughs> I won't. I'll be there to help you with the meal real quick. Don't worry about it, girl. I got Mike. Let's just take a rest, relax, and have a bath if you wish. We'll see each other again at 8.30. Is that fine for you, Dora? More than fine. See you, Jess. See you. Episode 2. Job Interview Jess, tomorrow will be a very big day for me. What's that, girl? You seem quite nervous. I'm going to have a job interview at the New York Headlines office at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Pardon? New York headlines? You were talking about New York headlines with Sarah Huffersmith, one of the most famous editors of the decade. I am. Sarah will be one of my interviewers. Oh my god! That's unbelievable! You gotta ask Sarah for an autograph for me, Dora. Jess, I'm being stressed out right now. Stop kidding. Okay, fine then. So, tell me what you are afraid of the most. You mean my fears? 
Yeah, tell me things that scare you. Hmm, I don't think that I like that animal very much. You're terrified by spiders? Yes, I'm also afraid of the dark and being stuck in a rut. Being stuck in a rut, huh? You meant you're afraid of doing something over and over again, right? Yeah, that's right. Repetition is probably what I'm scared of the most. You see, going to the interview is not one of your fears at all. Your fears are spiders, the dark, and being stuck in a rut. I know when it comes to important occasions in our lives, we are surrounded by fears. However, in the worst case scenario, which can happen to you during the interview, you can still find another open door. You're so right. I won't lose anything if I fail in that job interview. I'm living in New York. Opportunities are unlimited for people who are passionate and talented. That is so true. Thank you so much, Jess. I'm feeling like there's a weight off of my shoulders now. You have relieved yourself of a burden, haven't you? I will try my best at the interview tomorrow morning. I believe that you can do it. Thank you, girl. Oh, actually, Jess, you can help me with one more thing. What's that? I'll be happy to help you. Let's go into my room. I could use some help with an outfit that I should wear into the interview tomorrow. Okay, chop chop, show me what you got, Dora. Oh, I'm wondering what I should wear. The first outfit is a basic one with a white shirt and a navy blue skirt. The second set includes a white shirt, black trousers, and a black jacket. So, what do you think, Jess? I think the first outfit is a bit boring, but the second one is chunky with that jacket. The weather now is not that cold to wear jackets. Hmm, you're right. To impress an interviewer like Sarah Hufersmith, you should wear something simple but still elegant. Don't forget to show the energetic side of your characteristics, too. So, what should I wear, Jess? My choice is for the second outfit, but you've got to lose that jacket. A simple white shirt and black trousers are enough. Are you sure? 100%. Just be yourself and you will nail it. Aw, Jess, you're the best. Now, let's sleep tight, sweetie. Save your energy for your big day. Let's go to bed. Good night, Jess. Sweet dreams. Welcome to the official interview of the New York Headlines. I'm Samson, journalist of the NYH. And I'm Sarah. I am a head editor of the NYH. We're in charge of the interview today with you. I hope that we can get the best experience. Yes, it's such an honor for me to be here today. I think we can start now. So, Dora, can you give us a brief introduction about yourself, please? My name is Dora Pearson. I'm 23 years old. I have a degree in journalism at Boston University, Massachusetts. I've just moved to New York City to follow my dream to become a reporter. Your hometown is Boston, and you came to Massachusetts to earn a higher education? Yes, that's right. 
Dora, do you have any working experiences in reporting and writing articles? I do. I used to be president of my university broadcasting club. I've also finished my six-month internship at one of the local newspaper offices. That's impressive. I think you have a very solid background to become a reporter at the NYH. But can I ask one more question? Yes, please do. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Right now, it's still kind of... In the matter of five years from now, my expectation is that I can be a professional reporter. Because I just love reporting so much. I think it's one of the ways to spread kindness and bring up-to-date news and information to everyone. Therefore, I'll try my very best to observe, to learn, and to share what I know to people. I appreciate your passion for this career. I can't help myself but agree with you, Samson. Dora, I just think that you really have the potential to be a successful reporter. Even more successful than us. She might be, and yes, I think it's enough for the interview today, Dora. We'll inform you through email the result within a week. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, and we hope to see you later. Keep it up, young lady. How did it go, Dora? Everything went pretty well. What did they say to you? Calm down, Jess. They will mail me with the results soon. I have a really good feeling about this one. You're surely to be hired. Hopefully. Oh, can we meet up at the K&K &K supermarket now? Yeah, I'll be there soon. Okay, see you. See you. Episode 3. At the Supermarket. Don't you have eyes? Get out of my way! Oh, I'm sorry, madam. What's wrong with that old lady? Where is Jess going now? Hey, Dora. I'm sorry for coming late. What happened to you, buddy? I had to take two taxis to be here. Why? The first taxi driver was driving like there was something chasing him. So I insisted on getting out of that car. The second driver drove as slowly as a snail, but I couldn't do anything about it. Who are you, Jess? Come on, let's go shopping. What do you want to buy? Oh, I want to buy some towels and a new shampoo. Okay, I don't know much about towels, but I can definitely help you pick the right shampoo for that beautiful brown curly hair. Thank you, buddy. By the way, what did they ask you in the interview? Not too much. They asked about my working experiences and my future plan. Oh, future plan. What did you say? I said I just wanted to follow the career of a reporter since it's my passion. On point. How about you, Jess? Have you ever thought about doing anything else if you don't do modeling? Hmm. I haven't thought about it. However, I think I might be a good housewife or a good mom. Yes, that's right. 
Here comes the personal hygiene area. Wow, the supermarket here is just so big, spacious. We don't have so many big supermarkets like this in Boston. In New York, supermarkets are always divided into sections, such as the bakery, dairy, produce like fruits and vegetables, frozens, meat, and the deli. We also have a general grocery section where one can find packaged goods, cleaning supplies, and personal hygiene items. Deli? What does that section sell? That section sells ready-to-eat food products, such as cooked meats and prepared salads. Oh, okay. I get it now. I don't think people categorize food like this in my hometown. We're at the general grocery section, so we can buy you some good quality towels and shampoo. Yes, let me see. I think I'll take this pack. Good choice. Let's go find you a nice shampoo. Look at that! It's an aisle of hair products! You found it! This is my favorite product. You should try it. Oh, natural ingredients. Grapefruit smell. I love it. Okay, let's go to the checkout. The pork is not that fresh. Sorry, madam. That's all we have. Thank you for your feedback. Your total bill is $102.50. Hold on! You young people never know the value of patience. Oh, I just have $100. What should I do? I'm sorry, you have to put something back. No, no, I need to buy all of those. I'll pay for her. She's short two and a half dollars, correct? Yes, that's right. Thank you, young girl. I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry for yelling at you at the entrance. Old lady, don't worry about it. I hope you have a nice day. Same to you. You're very kind. Your parents should be proud of you. Thank you. Please place all your products here. Yes. Your bill is $57.50. And that adds the two fifty, so it'll be 60 Do you pay in cash or with your card? I'll pay in cash. Here it is. I've got your $60. Thank you for choosing K and K. We wish you two a nice day. Thanks. Did that old lady shout at you? Yes, she did. She told me to get out of her way. Old people are grumpy and mean sometimes. They are. But she reminded me of my granny. Aw, Dora. You're just too good for this world. Why didn't you buy anything, Jess? I'm saving for a new pair of boots. You know I can't live without being pretty, right? <laughs> I bet you can't. But I bet you can tell me about those boots. Oh... They're a part of my favorite fashion designer's autumn collection. The black feather boots with honey-colored stripes. Well, that sounds very well matched for you. Yes. 
Oh, our taxi is here. Let's head home, Dora. I'll be pleased to do so. I'm so hungry now. You are? My stomach is screaming for food now. Let's get going then. Home sweet home. Yeah. I miss our sofa. It's just so soft and comfy. Dora, what do you want to have for dinner? I guess we can cook some Italian spaghetti. Since we have beef, pasta, tomato sauce, and everything we need to make a perfect spaghetti dish. Oh, guess who is good at cooking now? Thank you, Jess, for realizing. I've learned those things you taught me, my friend. You're such a fast learner, Dora. Now I need you to mince the beef and make some meatballs. I'll take care of the pasta. Yes, ma'am. I can do it like shooting fish in a barrel. You mean making meatballs is easy, right? Yes, shooting fish in a barrel means doing something easily. In Boston, we have a lot of docks and harbors. We eat fish almost every single day. So we have that expression. Hmm, that is very interesting to know, Dora. Oh, on an unrelated note, Jess, how's Mike doing? I haven't seen him here for nearly a week now. He's on a business trip in Texas. Did you know that in Texas, people eat fried butter? They do? Fried butter? Doesn't sound any good. Mike told me so. He hasn't got the gut to try it yet. But I bet he will since he's flying back to New York tomorrow. And I know Mike. He's such a taster. People said you will never know if you don't try it, right? Indeed. Episode 4. What have I waited for? It has been almost a week from Dora's interview day at New York Headlines office. Dora is very desperate to know the result. But she can't do anything but wait. She decided to go sightseeing the city in the morning. And on the way home, she bumped into a Chinese restaurant. Oh, is that Jess's favorite Chinese restaurant that she told me about? I should give her a call to ask if she wants to eat Chinese food for lunch. Hi, Jess. Hey, Dora. Where are you now? I'm nearly home, but I'm stopping by a restaurant named Golden Dragon. Is that your favorite Chinese restaurant? Yes, that's right. What about it? Do you want me to buy some Chinese dishes for lunch? That's a brilliant idea, Dora. I'd love to have fried rice with chicken and salted fish. It's my favorite. How about you? What do you have? I have no idea, Jess. I think I will have to take a look at the menu first. What are your recommendations for me? Oh, you can have the same dish as me. Or if you're interested in seafood, King Prong fried rice should be the one. Okay, thank you. I'll be home soon. Yeah, see you at home. Jess, I'm home. Let's have lunch. I hope you're not starving. Hi, Dora, but I am. I am starving now. But I always know that Chinese food 
is worth the wait. <laughs> yes, there was a very long line of customers standing in front of the Golden Dragon restaurant. I assume they have all the same thoughts as you. <laughs> so, what did you order, Dora? I bought king prawn fried rice, like you said. Because looking at the dish image made my mouth water already. The fried rice itself is very delicious. Okay, let's eat. I can't wait anymore. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Oh, I am so satisfied with food now. I'm glad you are, but I have something in store for you. What? A surprise? For me? Yes. Golden Dragon has sold their newest dessert, fortune cookies. Impressive. Forget what I said about being full. There's always room for dessert. Especially fortune cookies. I'll take one and one for you. Let's see what message I got. Mine is... What you have waited for has come. Good luck. What I have waited for... Dora, that's your interview result. Did you check your email box today? Let's check that now. Chill, Jess. It's just a cookie. It can't be that true. Oh my god, Dora. If it is not true, why did my cookie say... You will have a party tonight. That's just a coincidence, my friend. But I guess checking my email box does not do any harm. Please do. God! I've been hired by New York Headlines! I don't want to say this, but... I told you! Never underestimate the power of fortune cookies. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so happy now. I think I'm gonna cry. Don't you cry, Dora. You should call to let your mom and dad know this piece of good news. They will be on cloud nine. They will. Thank you, Jess. I'll call Mike for our party tonight. You can't go against my fortune cookies message. Hi, Mom and Dad. How are you guys doing? Hi, sweetie. We're good. I missed you. We missed you more, sweetie. Mom, Dad, remember what I said about my interview at New York Headlines? Of course we do. Did they send anything to you? I passed. I'll be a reporter at the NYH. Oh my god, sweetie, I'm so happy for you. Dora, I knew you could do it. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. They said that I could come to the office next Monday. You finally can do what you desire to do since you were little. Congratulations, sweetie. One piece of advice for you. Never stop elevating yourself. Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you will land among the stars. I'll never forget what you taught me, Mom and Dad. Yes, that's right. You still remember our family's slogan. Sweetie, we love you. Your dad and I will go visit you someday. <laughs> I love you. I hope we can unite someday. <laughs> To Dora and her new job at the New York Headlines. Cheers!
Thank you two for being here celebrating with me. I really appreciate this moment, and I hope that we can have many more happy moments together. We are your little family in New York now, Dora. She's right. I'm so thankful for everything we have done. So I would like to make one more toast before the food gets cold. Sure. Go ahead, my friend. To our friendship and new life in New York. Cheers! All right, dig in, everyone. The dishes won't eat themselves. <laughs> You're right. Oh, Dora, Jess told me about the fortune cookie story. Do you have any cookies left for me? I want to know if the cookies are really powerful and magical. Yes, take one, Mike. You're going to be blown away with the cookie. Hmm, tasty. Golden Dragon made this? Yeah, the fortune cookie is their newest dessert. The cookie said, you will have a party tonight. Oh my god, Mike, that's exactly what I got. You two are so meant to be. That's too cheesy for me. <laughs> this is just magical. I'm having a party with my close people. This cookie deserves a gold medal. <laughs> Mike, you're being extra. Enjoy your meal, guys. Episode 5 Dora's First Working Day at New York Headlines Hi, guys. How are you doing lately? I hope that you're doing well. You asked how I am doing? Oh, thank you. I'm doing well. Today is my first working day at the New York Headlines. One of my biggest dreams came true. Let's see how my day goes in this episode. Morning, Dora. Good morning, Jess. Did I wake you up, buddy? No, you didn't. I just felt like rising and shining. Okay, cool. Would you like some coffee? Yes, please. <sighs> Thank you. So, Dora, first day at the New York headline. How are you feeling now? <laughs> I'm very pumped right now, but I think I can manage it well. Surely you can. Don't overthink it, buddy. They are just some of the most well-known reporters and journalists in New York. <laughs> Good cheer-up speech, Jess. You really know how to scare people. I'm not overthinking anything. I just think that I want myself to have a can-do attitude. Nice and kind manner in front of the NYH co-workers. That's it. Right on. Break a leg, Dora. Thank you, Jess. Oh, by the way, are you taking a lunchbox to work today? Should I? Oh, please. That's a trick question. Never bring a lunchbox on your first day at a workplace. Why is that? The easiest way to get to know your coworkers more is to eat out with them. Oh, I get it now. Jess, you're such a genius. Attention, everyone. 
This is Dora Pearson. She'll be working with us from now on. Hello everyone, I'm Dora. This is an honor for me to work with all of you at NYH. Hi! Nice, nice to, to meet you, Dora. Dora. Dora will be part of health and lifestyle team now. So I hope that you guys can help her with catching up and everything. We will. Dora, may I introduce her to you? She's Tina, also a reporter of Health and Lifestyle News. Hi, I'm Tina Shen. Nice to meet you, Dora. Oh, I can sense a very good teamwork here already. Tina, can you help show Dora around? That's my pleasure. Okay, thank you. I have a little something to deal with now. You two have fun. All right, have a nice day, everyone. Dora, that is your desk, next to mine. Oh, that's even better. Put your bag down there. I'll introduce our team to you. Yes. Wait for me a second. So, Tina, tell me more about yourself. How long have you worked here? I'm 23 now. I've just graduated university and my major is journalism. I used to work here for nearly half a year as an intern. Then there was a door opening for me. So I've become a reporter for four months now. That's so cool, Tina. Follow me this way, please. Good morning, everyone. This is Dora Pearson. She's our new reporter of Health and Lifestyle team. Hello, everyone. Hope that we'll have plenty of good times working together. How do you do, Dora? Uh, thank you, Mr. Sampson. I'm doing pretty well. That's good to hear. As you know, I'm a full-time journalist, but I'm also part of these technician guys. <laughs> he is. Mr. Sampson is like a link in a chain for the tech room. May I introduce to you? We have Tim, the cameraman. Duncan, another cameraman. And Jake, our video editor. Hi, Dora. Hi, Dora. Nice to meet you guys. Hey, Dora. We will have a lunch break in 10 minutes. Do you have any plans? Oh, um, I actually don't. My flatmate suggested me to have lunch with you guys instead of bringing my own lunch. <laughs> she sounds like a badass one, doesn't she? Yeah, she's a badass girl. Her name's Jess, and she's a model for a storm agency. Oh, I know that model agency. Who doesn't? Their models and fashion concepts are very unique. Storm is definitely a rising star in beauty and fashion industry. How cool is that, right? Yeah, so cool. Tell Jess I said hi. Sure, I will. Hmm. I know there is a cafeteria at the bottom of the building. Is it good to try? And... Do you mind if I ask you to be my date for this lunch? <laughs> Dora, I'd love to be your date, but I'm afraid I can't do it today. How bad is it? Why is that, Tina? Today is my boyfriend's birthday, and he's going to catch a night flight tonight. So we will have to make time for each other. Sorry, my friend. I'll take it up for you another day. All right, I'll see you at two. Oh, the cafeteria is wonderful. 
Bon appétit! Hi, Dora Peterson. Oh, it's Pearson. I'm Dora Pearson. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Jake, 25 years old. One of Mr. Sampson's tech guys. I remembered you. May I sit here? Is the seat available? Yes, please. Help yourself. You're not from New York, are you? Oh, how did you know? I'm from Boston. Boston? You're kidding me, right? My grandma's from Boston. She was my swimming coach when I was small. She always says, Boston knows, Boston swims. <laughs> For real? Your granny is funny. Shirilla is. But there is one thing I have to tell you. I was born and raised in Boston, but I don't know how to swim. You don't? You should know how to swim, Dora. I know. That's why I have signed up for a class at the swimming center on the weekends. Oh, I work as a coach there. No way! Episode 6 what a bad day for Dora. Morning, Tina. Where is Dora? Hi, Jake. She is just not here. I'm wondering what happened to her. I know. Dora has never been late. Did you try to connect with her? I did, Jake, but she didn't take my call. Sarah is waiting for her in the meeting room. Dora is in big trouble now. She must be. I'm so worried about her now. <laughs> well, Jake, I get it. You guys seem pretty close these days. Oh, um... Uh, I'm just Adora's colleague. She's coming to work late. Of course I care about her as a colleague. <laughs> I understand it, Jake. <laughs> Put me on the deal. I'll help you. Uh, stop joking around, Tina. Oh my gosh. I'm so done. Am I? Dora! Dora where have, where you, have been? you been? Huh, long story. I'll fill you guys in on later. I have an important meeting with Sarah now. Yeah, hurry up. She's been waiting for you for so long. Dora, good luck. Hi, Sarah. I'm so sorry for this lateness and thank you for your patience. This is unacceptable, Dora. You better tell me what was going on with you. You were supposed to have this meeting 40 minutes ago. I had to reschedule my agenda for you, Dora. Yes, please listen to my explanation. This morning, I was getting off the bus, then walking to work as usual. I saw an old lady going in front of me. She seemed old and needed help. Therefore, I gave her a hand to walk her to where she headed to. Thank you, young girl. You're so sweet. You're welcome. Your basket seems heavy. Do you want me to carry that for you? Yes, please, young girl. My best friend lives two blocks away from here. I'm bringing her some breads, cheese, and fruits for her 70th birthday. Your friendship is very precious, madam. I work in the neighborhood, so I am so happy to take you to your best friend's house. Thank you so much! 
let me give you a piece of advice. Remember, young girl, family, love, and friendships are what matter most in this world. I will remember your words. No! Help! Help! A thief! Lose it, or I will beat you up. Lord, help! Somebody help! Police here. Stand still. You're under arrest for property snatching. Hands up, or I will shoot. Madams, I believe the basket belongs to you two. Oh, God. Thank you. Did you two get hurt anywhere? Any injuries? No, sir. We're all good. That's good. You're very bold, young girl, when fighting with that bad guy. You deserve a medal for your bravery. Everyone would do the same as I did to protect innocent citizens. Yeah, right. I need you two to go with me to the station to record what was happening. Oh no. How long does the reporting process take? I'm on my way to work. We will make it as quickly as possible, miss. I'm so sorry for this inconvenience. Madam, miss, please get in my car. That's why I came late to work. That literally sounds like an excuse, Dora. You're a reporter. You have to keep your professional everywhere, every time. I wanted to acknowledge your kind act, but workplaces like the New York headlines have rules. I understand. I'm sorry, but you've got yourself a fine for coming late to work today. I don't know what to say. I won't let this happen again. I hope you have learned the lesson this time. And I hope this is the first and the last time we have this talk. How are you doing, Mom? I'm doing great, sweetie. How's life treating you? You look sad, baby. I am, Mom. What's wrong with you, my girl? Uh, I had a bad day today, Mom. This morning, I helped an old lady from being snatched. When I was fighting with the thief, luckily a police officer came to rescue us from the dangerous situation. You did the right thing, baby. And I'm so happy that you are all right. Yes, the old lady and I were fine. We didn't get hurt anywhere. However, the officer wanted us to come to the police station to report our case. I did, and I got to work late. Oh, that's not good for a new employee like you, right? No, not good at all. My supervisor, Sarah, criticized me for my unprofessionalness. And I got a fine, Mom. I'm so sorry to hear that, baby. But on the bright side, I know that you helped people. That's what we taught you to be, a kind girl. Yeah, Mom. I'm just being sad for a little bit. I think things will be better tomorrow. Things surely will, baby. Never have a doubt on yourself and your kindness. Thank you so much, Mom. Mom, I think I'm gonna go back home this weekend. Spending time with you and Dad. That's wonderful, baby. Your dad will be very happy hearing this news. <laughs> I really miss our garden and your special dishes, Mom. Of course, I will make you a lot of good food. We'll have a fantastic weekend together, my dear. I think I'm going to bed now. Good night, Mom. Nighty night, sweetie. Episode 7 Dora Visits Home Mom! Dad! I'm home! Oh! 
Hi, sweetie. Welcome back. Honey, our daughter is home. Look at you, Mom. You look even prettier than when I was home last. What is your secret? Thank you, sweetie. My secret? Mm. I've been doing yoga a few times a week now. Wow, yoga? Is Dad practicing yoga with you? <laughs> you know he can't stand listening to meditation music. He's always sleeping in the middle of the section. <laughs> That's my dad. What is he doing now, Mom? He is replacing the window glass of the attic, sweetie. Why is he doing that? I thought he loved it. He used to love it until we decided that we wanted colorful glass instead. What a brilliant idea! I'll go upstairs to make him surprised. Okay, go ahead, sweetie. But don't forget to be gentle with your dad. He's too old for such a big surprise as you. I got it, Mom. Surprise! Oh my god! Dora! Hi, Dad. How are you doing? Oh god. My daughter! I missed you a lot. Dad, are you changing the type of window glass? Your mom already told you, right? Since we have a stunning rose garden, and your mom and I thought we would have to elevate our house to the same standard. Stunning. Yeah, right? Dad, you're the best. Let me give you a hand. Tell me how I can help you, Dad. That's my daughter. So, Dora, you're going back to New York on Sunday, aren't you? Yeah, Mom. I have to take the night flight at 8 p.m. on Sunday. So that I can still go to work normally on Monday. Speaking of work, do you have anything to tell us about? I heard what happened to you. The story about you helping the old lady. Besides that bad day, I think the New York headlines is a very ideal workplace. We're, We're all ears. ears. We work for Health and Lifestyle News. Dora, episode 24. Which is what I'm very Dora passionate about. Dora gets into an accident. Our team has five members. Dora, episode Me, 25. Jake Tina, and Dora in India. Jake. Tim. Dora, episode 26. And Duncan. Broken microwave. Tina is Chinese American. Dora, She's also episode a 27. Like me. Tickets for two. Zunkin Dora, and Tim are our cameramen. A series and Jake, of bad he's luck. He's a brilliant and a very creative video editor. Dora, episode twenty-nine. Wow! Congratulations, Sounds like you've got yourself a to dream Dora. Team. A team of diversity. Dora, episode thirty. Finale. Yeah, we always have Jess's brought big day. about a lot of different and colorful perspectives into any task that we did. Keep doing good work. Bottles up for Dora and her new team. Cheers! Cheers. Thank you, Mom, for making me delicious food. You better eat a lot, Dora. We will have to water the entire garden this afternoon. No biggie, Dad. Are you ready, girls? I always am, Dad. 
Let's feed these beautiful roses with water, everyone. Yes, madam. So I think we can make use of our teamwork today. I'll be in charge of the white rose plants. Pink for Dora and red rose plants for Mommy. Is everyone clear? All, All clear, clear, sir. sir. Oh, it's much hotter than I thought. I'm sweating so much right now. <laughs> this is our workout every day. And that's why I don't need to participate in your mom's yoga class. Yoga is more about practicing our minds. Gardening is about strengthening our muscles. Two activities are somehow similar. You're so right, honey. As you mentioned about activities, Mom, I'm going to eat out with Emmy and Alex tonight. Oh yes, they must be missing you a lot. Alright, have fun, you kiddos. But don't forget to come back home before 11 o'clock. <laughs> okay, I promise. I'm getting dressed up now. Love you. Hey, Dodo! Emmy, my bestie. What's shaking, Bacon? Shaking pretty well, thanks. Long time no see, Dora. What's up, Alex? So far, so good. How about a group hug? Sure! Ah, sure. oh, I missed you guys so much. Did you miss me? I didn't, but Emmy did. <laughs> You're such a liar, Alex. You know I can't stand the library, and Dora... You were the only one who agreed to go to the book club with him. Guess who said I wish Dora was here all the time? No, I don't say that, just to be clear. You guys are hilarious. I'm so hungry right now. Let's go get some chicken wings and popcorn. Ew, yucky, Emmy. I said that to her almost every day. Guys, if I had a penny for every time someone said so, oh, I would be so rich. <laughs> <laughs> Millionaire Emmy. Dora, you said you're living with a storm model and working with Sarah Huffersmith? How lucky are you? Yeah, I don't want to brag about it, but New York is full of interesting people. We're so glad that you find yourself a second place to call home. Thank you, Alex. The work sometimes is rather stressful and overwhelming, but luckily, I'm having all of you by my side. You're so welcome, Dodo. I strongly second it. So, when are you going back to New York? I'm leaving on Sunday night. Oh, too early. The book club opens on Monday. I would love to recommend some good books for you. I'm very happy to hear that. We can text on social media platforms. Three of us, we should definitely do more stuff. I'll try. You know, I'm very busy with setting up the surfboard store with my cousins. Oh, how is it going? They're planning on opening on this summer. Yeah, that's the plan. 
I'll definitely be your first customer. No, you can't, because Alex will be the first one. Stop kidding. You know I'm afraid of water, and I don't even know how to surf. Ha! <laughs> Calm down, Alex. It's just a joke. Episode 8. Dora being praised at work. I've got a package for Miss Dora Pearson. Miss Dora Pearson? Oh, it's me. I'm Dora Pearson. Here you go. This is your package. Please sign your name on this form. Thank you. Have a nice day. You have a nice day too, miss. What's in that package, Dora? I have no clue, Tina. Hmm. It said, From the New York Police Station, number three. OMG! The police? What did you do? Oh, I remembered now. They are sending me this package from the police station where I went to last week. Did you forget what happened to me last week? The thief and the old lady? No, of course. I didn't forget anything. I'm so curious about what they sent you. Chop chop, lollipop. Open it. All right, all right. Let's see what's inside. Oh, there's a letter from the police department and a certificate for my deed. Yeah, you deserve those things for your kind deed. What did he say in the letter? Um, it said, Dear Dora Pearson, I'm Thomas Edwards, a chief officer at New York Police Station Number 3. I have read your report and gladly know what you did for this city. It's never an exaggeration for a young, strong woman like you who is not afraid of protecting others and being brave enough to fight back against what we believe to do their harm to society. Thank you for being brave and willing to assist the unfortunate and vulnerable. Best regards, Thomas Edwards. Good day, everyone. Dora, people are extolling you for your kind act. I have contacted Mr. Thomas of the New York Police Station Number 3. He thought that it would be very great if we can write an article or make a short video about what you did. Oh, that will be a wonderful piece of news for the NYH and our team. I can't believe it. I mean, I'm very happy to do that. Yeah, we can do it in the way to convey the message. Kindness is contagious. Cool. Every single unique idea is more than welcomed, team. I trust in your abilities. Thank you so much, Sarah, for giving us such an amazing inspiration. No big deal, Dora. By the way, I'm sorry for being so harsh on you. It's fine, don't worry about it. Good morning, New York. I'm Tina Shen, reporter of Health and Lifestyle at the New York Headlines. I'm at Main Street, down the hall of the NYH building. Have you ever been a victim of bag snatching? Pocket picking? Let's follow us on this story. Hello, madam. Can you tell the audiences who you are and what happened to you last week? I'm Lucy Anderson. I'm living in the suburbs of New York. Madam, what happened to you? Last week, I was on my way here to give my best friend some products for her birthday. There was a young girl who helped me walk me to my friends. 
She is a very kind girl. We were going when the thief came and grabbed my basket. Oh, that's terrible. Yes, we were both so scared. But the young girl insisted to confront the thief. Confronting the basket snatcher. Fighting a back with the bad. Who is that brave girl? That brave girl is Dora Pearson. One of the talented reporters at NYH. Please send your sincerest greeting to our citizens, Dora. Hello, New Yorkers. I'm Dora Pearson. Reporter of Health and Lifestyle at New York Headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, Dora and I are colleagues. We are working with each other every day. We have been told about her kind deed. However, Dora, please let our audiences know your side of the story. Thank you, Tina. I'm more than happy to tell. Officer, thank you for joining our news today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So, you're the one who saved our ladies from being attacked and lost their property. What did you have on your mind at that moment? I've been working for the New York Police Station number three for almost 30 years now. Likewise, I've been dealing with thousands of street crimes every year. Especially pit-pocketing, phone snatching, bag snatching, and so on. But this is my first time that I saw girls who dare to fight for their own rights. I understand this society has put so much pressure and labels on our women as the vulnerable. However, this is such a good sign, and I hope that there are more and more women standing up for themselves. Yes! Women deserve every chance to be as an essential part of the world. They actively participate in fields such as politics, manufacturing, and science, and they are moms and wives at home. No matter what they do, we believe that they're contributing, creating, and radiating as many positives as possible to our society. I'm Tina Shen. And I'm Dora Pearson of the New York Headlines. Thank you, New York. One, two, three. Let's say it out loud. Kindness, Kindness is, is contagious. contagious. Wow, bravo, bravo. You are an icon now, Dora. Stop it, Jess. You're making me turn all pink. I'm saying the truth. You're a new icon of New York's young people now. You're a feminist who is very young, educated, talented. More importantly, you have a heart full of affection. Aw, oh, Jess, those are the nicest words I have ever been told. Thank you. I've been practicing giving people good comments. You have? You did a pretty good job, buddy. Well, 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 who am I? You know, I'm a natural at anything. Episode 9. Dora's First Date Hi guys, how's life treating you? Have you watched the newest stories of my life? You've watched everything? Wow, that's wonderful, my dear friends. There were a lot of things happening to me, such as helping an old lady on the street, getting punished, and compliments for that, visiting my hometown Boston, and being on the NYH News. It's such a ride of emotions to me, but it's nearly Valentine's Day, and things are becoming even more interesting now. It's a secret. You will have to find out yourself. So please stay tuned. Mikey, do you mind helping us with making the table? Yeah, sure, baby. The 
soup is coming. Who is hungry? Oh, me. Me, me. So am I, Dora. Your soup smells so delicious, though. Thank you. Guys, let's dig in. Yes, I cannot wait to taste your chicken soup. And I am mouth-watering for your tuna salad and steaks. Oh, come on, girls. You two are the best cooks in the house. Stop complimenting each other. It's such an honor for me to be your VIP guest tonight. <laughs> you are a VIP. A very important person, Mike. Yummy. I should go easier on the salt. Do you guys think the chicken soup is a bit salty? Oh no, it's totally fine for me. Same thought. It's flavorful, Dora. Don't worry about it. Thank you. You're welcome. By the way, do you have any plans for Valentine's Day, Dora? Any special dates? Oh, really? I almost forgot about it. But anyway, no, I don't have any plans yet. Wait. No way. No way! People are not supposed to be alone on Valentine's Day in New York City. Oh, please, Jess, Dora can have her own free time doing things that she likes. Isn't that great? Yeah, I still can do a bunch of fun activities by myself. Like going to the Japanese restaurant in the neighborhood, or visiting Chinatown. All right, all right, but I still keep my idea. You deserve someone who can do all those exciting things with you. I get it, Jess. Let's finish your soup before it gets cold. Oh, my back! Does it hurt? Sometimes. But it's worth it when we can finally come to a very nice and clean content for our next show. Yeah, you're right. I'm hoping that Sarah will give us positive comments. She will! Don't worry too much, Dora. I'll go to the canteen to get some coffee. Would you like some? I'm fine, thanks. I've already had enough caffeine for the day. Alright, I'll be back soon. Take your time. See ya! Hi, Dora. Good morning, Jake. Are you going to the canteen? No, I'm not going to the canteen. I'm just passing by to ask you this. Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. Um, I, I have two tickets for Zombies 3, and so I want to ask you if you... If you want to go to the movie with me on, on Valentine's Day, on, on Thursday night, well, I mean, in case your schedule is still available on Thursday. Well, you said Zombies 3, right? Yeah. Zombies 3, that's what I said. I'm a big fan of that film. And yes, I'm free that night. I think that I can go with you. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Here is your ticket. Uh, at half past seven. And after that, may I have the honor to have dinner with you too? Yes, that's even better. Can I be the one who chooses the dining? Of course you can. Ladies first. I'm thinking about a Japanese restaurant. Is Japanese sushi fine for you, Jake? Sushi for Valentine's Day? Perfect! I'll come to pick you up at 6.45pm on Thursday. That's fine. I will save the date. Yeah! See ya!
I couldn't believe that this is the final part. Yeah. Did you remember the detail when the Dr. Thomas drank that green substance? Indeed. He did it like there is no tomorrow, didn't he? I thought that substance would actually work and save them all. The zombie's three directors really instilled that idea into our heads. True. By the way, are you ready for dinner now? Uh, yes, I am. We're going to Sushi Planet, aren't we? Come on, let's go! I'm feeling like I can eat a lot already. So, Dora, what do you often do for fun? Well, I love music, so I often am practicing new songs, and I even began to compose. Wow, that's impressive. What musical instrument do you play? I play guitar and a little bit of drums. How about you, Jake? What do you do in your free time? I know how to play the drums, too. Besides that, I do fancy sports of all kinds. <laughs> Interesting. What is your favorite sport? Oh, tough question. I do spend a lot of time at the swimming center, but that's probably not the one. My choice might go to horse riding. Horse riding? I've never done that. It must be so cool. Yeah, the horse is a very friendly animal. Do you know how to befriend a horse? I don't. How? You need to look right into his or her eyes with no hesitation. Just sincere. That's the way. Right into the horse's eyes with sincerity? Like what I'm doing right now? Oh, you're doing it so right. But please don't look at me with those eyes. Why? You're being funny, right? Not so funny if you can hypnotize the horse with your eyes. <laughs> Stop joking, Jake. Okay. I mean, your eyes are very beautiful. And horses can really be hypnotized by sparkly objects. Ah, Thank you so much. Episode 10 Dora Takes Care of Jess What a wonderful Saturday! Eggs and bacon, the simple but perfect duo. Good morning, Dora. Rise and shine, my friend. <coughs> Why are you up? <coughs> so soon. Oh God, Jess, you're not feeling very well, are you? <coughs> I guess. Look at you. Let me check your temperature. Let's sit down right here, my friend. Is the medical kit still in the living room, Jess? Yes. I'm fine, Dora, just a bit tired. You are not fine at all. Let me see. We have a first aid kit, pills, cotton wool, bandages, tablets, ointment, cough syrup. Ooh, we can use cough syrup. And yeah, finally, I found the thermometer. No, I hate that syrup. It tastes like children's puke. Jess, you have to drink it, or else your situation will get worse. Now, let me check the body temperature for you. Place the thermometer tip under your tongue, Jess. All right. 
How long should I hold this? It's been so long since I was sick. Usually 30 to 40 seconds, my friend. Let's hold that thermometer for one minute just to be sure. Time's up, Jess. Let me see. Oh no! Your temperature is 39 degrees Celsius. 102.2 degrees Fahrenheit. This is not normal at all. Oh no, why me? Why today? Today is Saturday. We're supposed to have fun. <laughs> My poor Jess, you're definitely having a fever with some coughs. Don't worry about it. I'll be here taking care of you and we can still have fun. Thank you, Dora. No biggie. Let's lie on the sofa. I'll cook you some porridge with my secret recipe, which will help you get well soon. Sounds suspicious, Dora. Are you sure you don't want to buy me some ready-to-eat porridge? Trust me, I won't let you down. Here comes the porridge! Just a spoon and you will be as strong as an ox immediately. What was happening in the kitchen? Did you fight with aliens to make me this porridge? Hey, stop it, Jess. At least I tried my best. And believe me, this is the most difficult recipe I have cooked my entire life. All right, I'll eat it at all costs. But what ingredients did you use, Dora? I call this dish pumpkin porridge with the minced lamb. Sounds top-notch and nutritious, right? Hold on. Pumpkin? Why is it so green? I accidentally put the wrong ingredient in it. That's the color of wasabi. But it won't affect the flavor, believe me. They said wasabi is very good for our immune system. <coughs> OMG, may God bless me and keep me safe. <coughs> oh no! <coughs> I'm sorry for that pumpkin porridge with minced lamb. It was really burning the roof of my mouth. Nothing but spiciness. Sorry. It's fine, Dora. I know you really made an attempt for that. Thank you. A failed attempt? Don't worry about it. At least, we are having delicious things to eat now. <laughs> you're right. On an unrelated note, tell me about your date on Valentine's Day. His name is Jake, isn't it? Oh, well, it was fine. Just fine? Is it because he's too boring? No, he's pretty interesting indeed. We have quite a lot of things in common, such as the love for music, swimming, our jobs, and so on. Wow, what a guy. First, we went to see Zombie 3, and then after that, we had dinner at Sushi Planet. Ooh, Jake loves wasabi. He almost ate everything with that spicy dipping sauce. Oh no, a wasabi guy again? What's wrong? I never trust those guys. They're always too selfish, overconfident. They think they're on top of the world. The best. 
they do? Hmm. This sounds like news to me. Jake is the only wasabi person that I have met. Jake might be that selfish and overconfident guy. Did he say something about his fancy car, luxurious perfume, or how much money he has in his bank account? The last time I checked, he didn't say anything like that. So what did he tell you about? Hmm. Tell me something that you think is your special thing, Jake. Wow. Uh, no one asked me about that. All right. You will be the first one besides my family to know about this. As far as I recall, that was a very hot summer that could melt any ice creams. So that my cousins and I decided to go to the swimming pool near my house. I was seven years old at that time, barely knew how to swim. So I always chose the kiddie pool. Until that day, I swam in the adult pool instead. And that was when the disaster happened. I couldn't breathe and I thought, this is the end for you, Jake. You have lived a wonderful life of a seven-year-old. When I was slipping away, there was a hand grabbing at me, but I couldn't see anything. Waking up, I saw myself lying in my bed at home. No one really knows who saved me. Unbelievable. That must be the lifeguard at the pool. No, we came to thank the lifeguards, but unluckily, they said they weren't there at the time. My cousin Drake didn't see anyone around me when I was fainting in the pool. Drake called my parents to come to take us home from the pool. That's strange. Yeah, I know. So strange, right? But that's what makes me special. I have been given a second life by someone. Therefore, I always feel thankful for everything. That's what he told me. Wow. This guy loves wasabi and he sounds like a nice guy too. <laughs> He's a very supportive co-worker, too. Oh! I almost forgot. Let's finish your cough syrup. No!